Hey, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. All right, it's January 3rd. Uh, we've got the funeral coming up of Pope Benedict. Uh, Benedict was the Pope that resigned, uh, and then Pope Francis took his place afterwards. Uh, and I think Pope Francis is presiding over the funeral uh, for, for Benedict. And it's got me thinking. Um, Pope Francis, uh, a number of years ago, Becky and I were honored to get to be uh, some of the sponsors for a conference, a legal conference on religious liberty that was being held in Rome. And Pope Francis found out about the conference and uh, wanted to meet the, the, the sponsors uh, uh, of the conference. And so we actually got a chance to meet with Pope Francis at the Vatican. Uh, uh, us and, and a number of, of other sponsors. There were a group of, uh, I don't know, 20 or so of us. And, and here's a, a, a picture that I got of, of me handing uh, Pope Francis a copy of my, my book, uh, Christianity on Trial. And Pope Francis, being from Argentine, uh, uh, was, was just so gracious and nice. And my wife, of course, speaking uh, Spanish with, with uh, an Argentinian accent, uh, having lived there for a long while, um, was able to tell him uh, how much we appreciated him and, and uh, that I wanted to give him a copy of the book. And he graciously took a copy of the book. And, and we were meeting him in the triclinium, uh, which was, I think the triclinium is actually Latin for a dining room. Um, it was built in the 15, 1600s based on the, the work that I had done on, on looking into it. And so uh, in a sense, we're meeting him in the dining room uh, there at the Vatican. And it was a really cool opportunity, even though I'm not Catholic. Uh, I, I uh, just recognized the, the institution uh, with all of its strengths and all of its weaknesses that is the church, the people of God. And then I add, so I've got that experience floating around in my brain. And then I've got this other experience floating around in my brain. I'm, I'm writing a, a devotional book right now on the minor prophets. And I was reading and translating Hosea uh, this morning. And, and in Hosea chapter 9, verse 10, there's this really uh, stunning passage where Hosea reminds Israel about the time of their exodus through the wilderness and that God had chosen them as unique people. He equates it to uh, wild grapes or the first figs off of a, a, a tree in the first harvest. It's, in other words, Israel was unique and special and, and God chose them. And, and instead of reveling and, and thriving in that relationship with God, uh, some of the Israelites uh, started going into sexual um, uh relations with, with um, uh, uh, Moabite women uh, that were part of a fertility cult to try and evidently appease the, the Baal, the, the fertility god, uh, so that he would uh, bless them with extra crops or something. And, and God dealt with that in the, the book of Numbers, but it's, it's equated in Hosea to, to what the people in Hosea's time were doing. So uh, uh, like the, the, the church, here's, here's a group of people who are called to be something special to God. And they've got great people who've done great things, but they've also got people who have been a real a blotch on their reputation. And so God says, you know, you, you're like those Israelites in that day that went to Baal, uh, the Baal Peor, they called him. Um, uh, uh, and, and as a result... Um, you're going to become like the gods you worship. And, and, and that was not a good thing because those were fake gods. They were dead gods. And God was going to visit upon the people. And so I've got that spinning around in my head. And then I've got my video thought for the day. It's the third spinning around in my head and it becomes the Venn diagram that merges these two together and leaves me with this thought for you. We can do good things in our life and we can do things that are shameful in our lives. And we need to recognize 
the good things that we can do and we need to grab those and we need to embrace those chances and we need to zealously pursue the good. And the evil that lurks around the edges that seems attractive, we need to shun. We need to focus on the good and not the bad. That's uh, just the way my Venn diagram brain works today on January 3rd. I hope it's a blessing to you because it is the video thought for today.